Hey you guys, welcome to New, New York. York. I see a Christmas tree. I left my heart in New York. She had brown eyes and she had skin like gold. How she loved me so. I left my heart in New York. Alone on Christmas with you. Good morning, made it back to the hotel with our juices and smoothies. So this is juice generation. This place is like a five minute walk at most. Now we're gonna have a nice breakfast. The main thing we always tell everybody whether you're at home or on vacation is do your best to start with a big, nice, healthy breakfast. So we're doing green juices, blueberry protein smoothies. So I went to Whole Foods last night and got some instant oats. Aaron had room service bring us up a little hot water maker so we could add that to the oats. I bought some frozen cherries at Whole Foods, which is also right around the corner. We choose this place because of its location to Columbus Circle. We're super close to Whole Foods. This juice bar, Central Park, and the plaza, like all the cool places, we love this location. Aaron requested a mini fridge, so I actually got some berries to put in there. The hotel bathroom hack. Yesterday in Central Park, we paid a stupid amount of money for really average fruit cups. So this morning, I'm reusing our smoothie cups and I bought some organic berries at Whole Foods last night for a fraction of the cost. So we've got organic berries to go with us today and we get to choose what goes in them. Woo! And we're using recycled cups. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, you guys, we are here at the public library. We just took a little walk through, looked at some art, saw the most beautiful Christmas tree inside, and now we're having a little snack. We are eating our berry cups that I packed this morning. The kids are eating oranges, and we're about to go to Bryant Park right here because there's an epic like Christmas carnival. Tons of food, a little ice skate rink, having so much fun, staying fueled, plenty of water, all the things. The kids are doing surprisingly well. Olivia thinks that she needs to walk the city streets like she's the woman about town. It's pretty funny, kind of cute. Highly, highly recommend New York City for anybody. It's probably one of the most vegan friendly places. You can literally find and get anything you want at any hour of the day. It's so fun, so cool loving the energy here. We have seen and done almost everything we've wanted to see and do almost completely by foot. We always try to stay at a hotel that's right by Columbus Circle and Central Park. Columbus Circle has a very nice whole food that's very convenient and when we're out and about we just take fast fruit with us. So bananas, apples, and oranges are the best because they are perfectly pre-packaged by nature. So they're very simple and easy to bring with us on the go, as well as some healthy crackers and other snacks for the kiddos. And then we usually find something along the way. Usually we make a stop at Central Park first thing to get our move on. So as you can see, we always optimize the way we eat, move, and rest, even when we're traveling. 
And other than that, we're not doing dedicated workouts, honestly, because we walk about 20,000 steps a day. And I'm not a big fan of like the wearable Bluetooth devices. So I got myself this like super old school pedometer that you can like clip on your waist or I've just kept it in my pocket. And we're already up to 5,000 steps today. It's gonna be a lot of exercise, plus toting the kids around, navigating the stroller with two kids in it, with a bunch of stuff in the undercarriage. So we're definitely getting our move on. Honestly, there's not a lot of resting in New York City. It is known as the city that never sleeps, but I think the rest component really comes in just in the sense that we're not in work mode, we're in vacation mode. We're trying to enjoy time as a family and realizing that Max is now forming some major core memories. Um, Liv may not remember this trip, but it's still just so much fun and so rewarding and gratifying to be able to see the world through their eyes because New York City is so, like, there's just a lot to take in, even for us as adults. So I can only imagine how the kids feel seeing a lot of these things for the very first time in their lives. Some of these massive cathedrals like St. Patrick's and the giant Christmas trees and people doing funny, weird, crazy things on the streets and the roasted, salted, sweetened nuts and the hot cocoa and just the music everywhere we go and saxophone players and accordions playing in Central Park. It's, it's just so amazing to see the kids just kind of awestruck by everything and they've been so chill and mellow for the most part and just taking it all in. So obviously we don't have all of our comforts and that's always the biggest stretch for me especially. I, I'm learning to bend and not to break so things like live now being potty trained it means we have to use public restrooms and being like kind of a germaphobe it is no bueno for me i've just learned to look at all of these little silly things that seem cringy as tests or life lessons or an opportunity to up level so i'm now at a new level of like what makes me cringe or grosses me out or stretches me or stresses me beyond that it's just you know the obvious difficulty of not exercising the way that I want to as intensely as I want to and with the food maybe it's a little bit more oily than I'm used to I don't have all of my protein powders and supplements but still trusting that I'm nourished all of these things that are slightly different the way that we eat move and rest I'm learning to welcome because again it's a chance it's an opportunity to level up it's an opportunity to take on new challenges to grow stronger to be more resilient so travel shouldn't be something that we avoid because we're fearful. This is a challenge to conquer and overcome so that I'm able to see more and do more and be more. So I'm really excited and just to display that for the kids too. As far as food, the best advice I can give if you're wanting to go super clean plant-based is stay somewhere like an Airbnb so you can prepare your own food and stay somewhere near a Whole Foods or another healthy type of grocery store. Sometimes we go to vegan restaurants. Honestly, we find that we have better luck at regular restaurants. Yeah, so, yeah. I like the Indian place where we went last night. It wasn't like vegan on like the sign didn't say vegan, but again, like finding real food that can be made vegan is often better because I find like a lot of these vegan restaurants like try really hard to make vegan food, but it's like either just weird or like the raw restaurants have like really high fat and it's like a lot of seeds and nuts and I don't know, so Aaron and I are like, let's just go to an Italian place and ask them to make it vegan. Let's just go to an Indian place and ask them to make it vegan. You know, real chefs that are, you know, classically trained and amazing, amazing food. So you can find vegan food anywhere, especially in the city here. Someone had asked me, is it true that New York City is just like wall to wall people packed like sardines? And honestly, parts of it, yes. Times yeah, Square yeah. and Rockefeller Center right now, especially because of the holiday decorations and the skating rink. Yeah. But we kind of avoid Times Square, yeah. but usually just like, if you're following the flow of people on Fifth Avenue while you're shopping, it's fine. I don't really even notice it. I don't no. know why. It I like bother it, it's me. fine, yeah. yeah. If you go to like the NYU area, Washington Square Park, it really like fizzles out. And then yeah. Soho is like a little more alternative, like yeah, yeah. artsy and edgy and just unique. The food too, the restaurants. That's why yeah. we go down there to eat and, and shop. It's fun, it's, yeah. it's eclectic. And if you see people on Instagram with like their fashion 
in photos, they're usually like leaning in up Soho. against a wall that's very obviously in Soho. It's yeah. just a cool, I'll, eclectic area. I'll insert a photo of you from, <laughs> from Soho from years ago. One thing I've really loved and appreciated on this trip in particular is the holiday cheer is like outrageous. I don't just mean like in the big public areas that are decorated, but the people themselves say happy holidays, Merry Christmas, enjoy, like everywhere we go. And I'm like, nowhere else do you like walk and pass by just tell you Merry Christmas or strike up a conversation. And like, this is a constant. Every time we come to New York, we have the most interesting conversations with the most interesting people. And this time it happened right when we got here and we went to Whole Foods to get a quick dinner. We had just gotten in late and this guy sat down next to me at this table with the kids as we were waiting for Dusty to check out and my instinct was like this is weird this is uncomfortable this is awkward but then we struck up a conversation and it turns out he actually studied in Lincoln Nebraska where we're from for some time and long story short he coaches authors to be creative and learn how to write better and we told him about what we coach people to do and that we are authors in the works right now. It turns out he's like an amazing coach, just like life coach. It turned into a life coaching session. I told him it's it's been so difficult to find time to meditate quietly and peacefully because the kids are always up with us and they go down with us at the same time every day. And he was like, just try and do this one simple task for 30 days. Just give each day a label. Go to the extremes with it. Don't be neutral. Don't judge yourself. Just go with what instantly comes to your mind right away and give each day a word at the end of the day and record those for 30 days and then at the end of those 30 days see if there's some type of trend and that's where you need to go that's where the work needs to be done um, or that's what you need to harness and embrace more of perhaps if it's like on the positive so conversations like that are like just they feel so divine like God placed this person in my life randomly and it's just really cool. It always seems to happen to us, especially in New York City. So I know a lot of people have their qualms with New York, like, oh, it's too this, it's too that, or it's not this, and it's not that. But honestly, there's a great quote that goes, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And that's how we view all of our trips, from Costa Rica, where we are stripped down to the bare minimum basics, and basically we're living like hippies that are barefoot, in the middle of the rainforest eating fruits falling off the trees and it's amazing and we're sun gazing and then we come here and we've got our rubber soled shoes on and there's barely any sun shining between the buildings but there is most definitely an energy there's a light and a dark any place you go and it all starts from within and finding that spark that light because the light will always outshine the darkness so if you can find that little glimmer of light and hope and exude that then you're better able to i feel like take in and access more of god's beauty and god's energy around you i feel so uplifted here and i feel such a energized uplifting energy you just have to access that light within and allow it to exude so that you can you know become a magnet and attract more of that into your life so we're gonna go have some more fun before we run out of daylight on our last day Just you and me out in the still Evening chill, what a thrill Alone on Christmas with you How sidewalk Mistletoe, where we can go and finally steal the king.
kiss. 